Hey friends, Dean here with some exciting news to share. You can now buy us a coffee. That's right. You can help support independent content creators like us by becoming a member of the 3324 Green Room at buymeacoffee.com slash 3324. Our episodes will always be free and that will not change, but your support at buymeacoffee.com slash 3324 will help us continue to bring you the best in music and movie podcasting, in our humble opinion. As a Green Room supporter, you'll not only have our undying gratitude, but you'll also be able to vote on which episodes we record and receive other perks for as low as $3 per month. That's the price of a cup of coffee. There's absolutely no obligation and nothing about the show will change. It's not going behind a paywall. Go to buymeacoffee.com slash 3324 for all the details. The link will be in the show notes of every episode as well. We'll see you in the green room. The Oscar-winning director of Rocky brings us another underdog story in 1984's box office smash, The Karate Kid. Stay with us. Get ready for the 3324 Podcast, where lifelong friends Dean Legiro and Eric Kuber share their love of all things music and movies. Dean has directed short films and is a music trivia buff. And Eric, trained in audio engineering, brings his extensive knowledge of music and film to the conversation as they discuss, debate, and celebrate their favorite albums, films, and much more. Welcome, friends, to the 3324 Podcast. Eric, they haven't quite reached the end of the internet with us, but I think they've found the place that's the most fun that talks about music and movies, right? Yes. Right? I we're, totally we're not agree at the with edge that. of the internet. You, you know, there's still a lot of internet out there, but as far as podcasting goes, you might have you might be coming close to the end because we're <laughs> we're we're like the, the dessert after you've listened to all the other podcasts. You come to this one last, and then you yeah. Are we the cherry on top? Perhaps I believe I so. I think we're the cherry, <clears throat> we're the whipped cream, we're the sundae, we're the dish, we're the spoon, the napkin, and the plate that goes under it, and we're the the waiter at the diner that brings it to you. All right. Oh, wow. Okay. Wow. That's quite, in other words, we're the, whole order. Order. we're the whole enchilada. All right. Hey, <laughs> let's keep doing it. And if it's your first time listening to us, well, let us prove it to you. Hang out with us as we talk about the Karate Kid. There's a whole bunch of other stuff in the back room. Go ahead. The doors open. Go check it out. Sort through the different boxes. Uh, hopefully you'll find other episodes that you like. Go ahead and check them out. Uh, if you're listening on uh, audio, uh, you should. If you want to give us some feedback, there should be a text or me- text us or messages message us button that you can go ahead and do that. Uh, and you can contact us directly, which is kind of a neat feature um, mm. that I didn't invent. But it, I sound like I'm taking credit for it, though, Nick. Right? I kind of sound like it, like <laughs> I did it. But it it's the the podcast provider. That's a little it's scary, bad. though, wouldn't you say? Can, That's kind of cool. We can, I think. We can instantly comment on, <laughs> yeah. on what we're trying. Yeah, they can be listening and, and text us. So that, <clears> that's, a, I think, a really neat uh, innovation, which shows the growth of podcasting. So, mm. um, yeah, enough of that. You got the deal. Come check us out. We're on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, all that good stuff. Let's get to our guests, Eric. Mm-hmm. Uh, since I said his name already, Nick Macchio is here. Thank also you. known as Nick Leshy. <laughs> The uh, thank you, yeah. We were on the floor, right? and creator of the City of Kick uh, blog. Um, so go check out what he's doing there. We'll drop a link to the show notes as we always do, uh, and then we bill Nick appropriately for the plug. Um, thank you. <laughs> thank how you. we do it? We we uh, we, we are we are the sorbet that cleanses the palate. <laughs> well, so, well, that, well, now that we got you, what, 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 anything you're working on currently, Nick? You know, just been busting my butt with my day job, and uh, just you know, that's it. Hoping to do some acting next summer. I've been offered a gig, okay. uh, so might might be doing that. So, cool. but cool. in the meantime, just nice. having fun with these podcasts and and enjoying watching movies and anything I can do in my free time. Fantastic! Excellent. Excellent. I heard I heard the gig you were offered is Evil Dead the musical. Is that true? <laughs> <laughs> that, that's not it. You were gonna... the Ralph <laughs> Macchio double doppelganger. You know, you know like my cousin uh, Vinny the, the the musical. Am I reading this correctly? They actually have in London. They're doing Minority Report as a stage play. Really? Yeah, I didn't hear about that. Not like getting very good reviews, but it's it's a stage uh, play, and they gender swapped the the main character, Tom Cruise character. It's yeah. not yeah, that very good reviews. That's amazing. 
<laughs> no, it, yeah, I, it's I, it's beyond me how the, it's actually being done, but it's no, it's just it's well, apparently poorly. Making everything <laughs> into a into a stage or a musical today, I, it's yeah. it's baffling. But Karate Kid like was this. supposed to be a, a wow. musical, and wow. you know, and yeah, Tom Cruise was supposed to play the lead. You know, so <laughs> yeah. it's all yeah. Yeah. Inter- left interconnected. Alone. Yeah, yeah, it, some things are just. <laughs> Better, better left, left alone. Left. And that ray of sunshine giving his opinion is Mr. Jerry Sullivan. <laughs> yes. Welcome aboard, Always Jerry. Your ray of sunshine. I am well. Glad to be here. <laughs> that that shade what? of green looks mighty fine on you, Jerry. I must you say. Like that? Yeah. Oh, what, is that what, what is it? Mighty Oregon? Is that what it says? Well, yeah. Okay. Yep. Oregon uh, running. Oregon ducks. Yeah. Nice. And I may disappear because we're having storms here. So if Ooh. I lose power. You're calling it from your cell phone, so you'll be fine. Hang in there. Hang in there. You're, you're, you'll, you'll be good. I will, I will Last try. but certainly not least is – yeah, you got it. We, we have trust in you – is uh, <laughs> Mr. Sean Grady as Mas Macchio. Oh, yeah, and, we just, and we just lost Jerry. There you go. <laughs> oh, man. I think he did that Jerry. on purpose. <laughs> but uh, we'll see. Hopefully, Jerry will come back. But Sean Grady, yeah. welcome aboard. How are you? I'm good. Great, glad to be here. Yeah, always Sean great. Is, uh, is co-creator of uh, drama from the past. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're in their active season right now. I have to try and get out to uh, to see one of their uh, productions. Great stuff. If you're in the lower Westchester County, New York area, uh, they do great uh, colonial era uh, reenactments. And uh, and Jerry is back with us. He made it back. Yes, I disappeared briefly. So welcome aboard, Sean. Good to, ha- good to have you. Great to talk with you all. Always. Yeah. Always, always, always. Um, so, yeah, we're going to uh, – Jerry asked a question beforehand. He keeps coming in and out, so hopefully he'll be here. But mm-hmm. he asked if we were going to talk about the fact that we're re-recording this. So I guess we'll we'll talk about it briefly. Mm-hmm. Um, we did record this episode, but it has never been released because we had audio problems. And, you know, uh, that's the reality of podcasting is not – you know, everything doesn't always go to plan. Sometimes, you know, and uh, sometimes we're at the mercy of technology or we want to make sure that we're bringing the best sounding product of, uh, as possible. Yep. Um, what we did do, though, is we waited a couple of weeks uh, to kind of let everything kind of resettle. So, we're, you know, um, but yeah, there's a little bit behind the scenes uh, of, of of this episode. And, and we've done it a couple of times in the past. And hopefully uh, you would not have known that we have done it if we didn't tell you. So anyway. So that, that's the little behind the scenes for the Karate Kid is we're taking this would be Karate Kid 2 technically. <laughs> um, but, we, you know, it's, we're gonna, it's like that alternate version of Back to the two. Future. One day that's going to be unearthed yeah. and it'll be like, whoa, what's going on here? Yeah, we'll 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 get to see Eric Stoltz. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I think Zemeckis has burned that footage because there's really nothing like this. Really, there's literally nothing that survives outside of a couple of couple of small shots and some uh, some photos. But mm. Anyway, I did a uh, we did a quick hit on that, so you can go look at. Uh, it's called uh, Back to the Future's original McFly, I think. So if you want that, that information, you can check that out. But here we go. Let's get let's talk about the Karate Kid. Let's kind of get refocused. Uh, of course, we're going to give you the stats like we always do. This was released in June of 1984, directed by John G. Avildsen, which is kind of significant because he di- he directed Rocky, which is an underdog story, and it was a Best Picture, and uh, you know a lot of accolades uh this was written by robert mark Kamen. uh eight million dollar budget and 130 million dollar box office that's a lot of money even in 1984 and then even for a film of this type uh, which is even more interesting uh there was one oscar nomination for pat marina uh, mm-hmm. who plays miyagi and he was that was for best supporting actor so this got uh sean this got some critical acclaim as well i mean it kind of you know, a lot of people look at this as one of another '80s teen pot boiler, but but I think we're going to make the case that this is this movie's something a little different, no? Yeah, I, w- I think so. Um, I think Pat Morita is great. Like, I, I appreciate that performance more um, as an adult than I did as a kid when I saw it. And uh, the movie is, yeah, it definitely I see it through a different lens as an as as I'm older than I did. Back when I was probably 10, I was 10. Yeah. Long time ago. Just to yeah. myself. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I think overall in, in reassessing this film, 
I think a lot of the performances are very nuanced. Like I said, it's very easy to dismiss this as one of those eighties films. Like I kind of got churned out, you know, you were seeing a lot of the, you know, the, you know, the teen, uh, you know, not the Brad pack, but there was a lot of these teen stars and they were just kind of making all types of movies. And, and again, the title, the karate kid kind of lends itself to thinking, Oh, this is kind of juvenile, but um, you know, Pat Morita's performance, Ralph Macchio's performance, you know, even William Zabka, like playing a, a stereotypical bully, but there's, there's a lot of other things going on. And I think that's what the staying power of this film is, uh, which made it so beloved, which spawned a, a bunch of sequels which, for better or for worse. And then ex- spawned the extremely popular Cobra Kai series, which some 40 years later uh, or 35 years later, when the first season came out, they decided to revisit this whole universe taking it from the 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 johnny character um but let, let's get let's get into the the cast and then we'll we'll kind of go from there of course ralph macchio is daniel la russa la russo sorry pat marita is mr miyagi william zabka uh runner up for scumbag of of the 80s james <laughs> spader right i mean the guy the guy had he was kind of like the the understudy like we can't get spader get william zabka you know like uh I was I was just watching Back to School with him, and he's the oh, same, yeah. same guy. Yeah, the same marmy look on his face, the same like <laughs> like like conceited grin. Uh, he was in just one of the guys, the same character in high school. Like he he kind of he kind of was uh, very underrated. Like we we always talk about how how Spader, right? Eric was so like he had that that scumbag look down, and he had like the the, the rotten guy character down. Yeah. I, William yeah. Zabka is kind of there also. He well, did it well. Yeah, he did it well, but he was definitely the the, the understudy to yeah. Spader. I mean, Spader was is the scumbag king. <laughs> yes, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> oh, nobody will uh, will ever top him. In, yeah, in he, he just had he just had a certain like air about him. Yeah, but mm-hmm. these are probably the nicest guys in the world, which means they're really good actors. Yeah, uh, Elizabeth <laughs> was Ali Martin Cove. Yes, and John Crease. Crease. <laughs> The Vietnam, uh, Vietnam uh, karate tournament winning, <laughs> yes, all in one, all in one uh, character, and then the great Randy Heller as Lucille Larusso, Daniel's uh, Daniel's mother. Yeah, uh, Chad McQueen as that, that Steve McQueen's son as Dutch, uh, and then you got some of the other kind of Cobra Kai guys who who didn't kind of uh, didn't kind of do much. Um, yeah, when when they were casting this, you know, young, young Hollywood. I'm going to go through a couple of of casting choices, and we'll kind of we can yay or nay them. Uh, Sean Penn, Jerry, what do you think? Too, yeah. too intense. Yeah, he just you needed the uh, the the macho, innocent, goofy, skinny looking. Sean Penn would have just. His anger would have taken yeah. uh, maybe as, out or, or maybe Johnny as, out. Maybe as you know? Johnny. I could see him yeah. doing the Johnny, not not the Ralph. No. Yeah, that's true. Because Sean Penn yeah, comes Johnny installed with a chip been... on his shoulder. It's it's factory installed, the chip on his shoulder. Yeah. <laughs> Sean Penn. Yeah. Uh, that could also gave like the you know, douchey rich type of feel to it. I I wouldn't get that from Penn. Penn I would just think was angry. And you know. <laughs> Wanted to be just the angry up. student running around the hall, like yeah. rampaging in the halls. Uh, Robert Downey Jr., he wasn't the RDJ that we know and love now, the Tony Stark guy. He was kind of, you know, hmm. uh, he did a lot of roles, but it, it, nothing really defined him early on. Charlie Sheen, nah, Nick, no. Charlie Sheen. You know, it's, it's tough to say any of these. I mentioned Tom Cruise before, you know, it's hard to say, but you know. Ralph Macchio just totally fit it. You know, uh, like Jerry said, he's this kind of skinny guy, fits that whole underdog uh, mm-hmm. role. But he's a good actor. Like he had just done Outsiders. Um, he brought so much to this. And I think that's what kind of elevated all the performances in this. Obviously, the direction and yep. the cinematography and the music. But I think Ralph Macchio was the core. Casting him kind yeah. of made this what it was. Mm-hmm. And I, I can't really see any other actor doing well, that. Well, let, let me throw one more out there uh nicholas cage was also <laughs> in the run it was also <laughs> eric's kind of tilting his 
head and kind of like, mm-hmm. uh, he, you know, almost like when a dog hears something funny and they kind of tilt. That's what Eric was doing, like the head, the head tilt. I'm like, I, yeah, I, I, I could definitely. But now, like seeing him now, I can't picture him yeah. young and. No, I could I could definitely see him as one of the the cohorts, you know, one of Johnny's yeah. buddies, like he always was, and you know, he was in quite a, actually quite a few movies, and you know, pretty young, you didn't even know it. I mean, he was in yeah. Fast Times and uh, just a little cameo, just you know, was in the background. But he, I could definitely see him as one of the the bullies. Uh, he would have just, done the just body bag be- line really well. Uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, uh, but no, not not as. Uh, not as Daniel. Not as Daniel. No. Nope. And then, and then, Kristen Glover was considered for the role of Johnny. Oh my God! Hey, you know where that, hey, that you, you know, take your damn hands off him! Not a very good at. I God feel like that would have been like a mass murderer type of thing. <laughs> yeah, Crispin Glover brings a certain energy. Yeah, uh, <laughs> that's purely Crispin Glover energy. Uh, and then, and then for the alley role, Helen Hunt and Demi Moore were considered. Uh, they they could have slotted yeah. in there. I think you know Demi Moore at the time was kind of doing those types of roles. She wasn't the Demi Moore that she would become. Um, yeah, Helen Hunt was, maybe. You know, um, yeah. I can see Helen Hunt. Helen Hunt. Yeah. Sure. I always picture but, her though in like you know Mad About You. She was already a little yeah. bit older. Yeah. I, I can't see her picture her like younger. I don't know yeah. if I've ever seen her in anything when she was younger or in the, in the eighties or such, but uh, project yeah. X, I think, right. <laughs> was she in that? Was that, that with was Broderick? Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> with, with, with the, with the chimps, right. It was the, yep. yeah. Yeah. Okay. Nuclear was that Helen Hunt? Okay. I think right. so. Oh, okay. There you go. There you go. So but you know, Elizabeth shoe in this too, this was her first role, I, I yeah. think. Right. And yeah, I think they saw her was, in a Burger King commercial. Yeah. She was, you know, she's the girl next door, you know, yeah. like California girl, really happy go lucky. But she also had that edge when she stood up to uh, to Johnny, right? So that smacked him right in the face, didn't yeah. she? Yeah, yeah, twice. <laughs> she she like, loved it. Yeah, she lay layeth the smacketh down, and yeah. she yeah, she wasn't afraid to also confront at the at the beach, the scene in the beginning as well. She kind of, you know, yeah. for for that time, especially for a high school girl, quote unquote. Mm-hmm. Uh, to really stand her ground, like, you know, take your Cobra Kai's and get out of here. You guys are idiot, like yep. you're acting like jerks because they're riding around and everything. Um, Roger Ebert gave this four out of four stars when it came out. Wow. It's high praise. Mm-hmm. That yeah. is very high praise. Again, these other types of films during this era, Re- Revenge of the Nerds and Porky's and just all those teen comedies kind of came and went. And this was a teen drama. But uh, like I said, there, there's, there's a, a lot a lot more out behind this. Yeah. Uh, Ralph Macchio was 22 during the filming of this mm. 22 years old. And, and he actually had to convince some of his co-stars that he really was. Cause like, <laughs> no way. he does not look 22 years old. Yeah. Even old. now he doesn't look 22. Yeah, no, he does the guy's like eternally <laughs> ageless. You know, there's a yeah, picture he's somewhere perpetually 15 years old. I mean, I, yeah. Yeah. He's, his like family Dick Clark. has been, <laughs> yeah. Fun. His family gene pool has been kind to him. And his voice, too, never changes yeah. either. So which lends that youthful stuff. Yeah, but he's kind of I mean, taught. I mean, you know, and, that, and that's the thing, too. I, you know, I think Nick said it. Um, this movie really hinges on him. Mm-hmm. So he's he has to deliver. And and it, again, it's very easy to take this movie for granted. But there's a lot of a lot of uh, footage, I think, on YouTube of the screen tests from this of, of Ralph Macchio. I mean, he there's a lot of different layers to this character. Yeah. There's a lot of anger, you know, uh, we could talk about whether or not we thought he was bullied because the fa- you know, him and his mom, there's, there's no father figure. Yeah. Um, they move from Jersey in the beginning, they're moving from Jersey to California, right. That to the California dream, at least the mother thinks so. She thinks that, you know, this is, uh, this is going to be the right move. And, and already Daniel Sean is, is already a little apprehensive. He's not really on board with that idea. No, yeah, no, he didn't. Yeah, it's it's tough to move at that age, especially when you're, you know, you're in high school. You got to go to a new school, make new friends, and you desperately are going to want to fit in. And uh, you know, that first, the first thing he does is he karate kicks that door open, and he ends up hitting that mm-hmm. that guy who you're like, oh, it's going to be his friend. We know not for long. Those friends basically ditch him real fast yeah. <laughs> after after he gets his ass kicked at the uh, at the beach party. Where'd you find this guy? 
Yeah, but then, but then when he, you know, after he gets that, you see him. He's got the karate book open and he's doing his kicks. So maybe there is something to it that he's had his problems before, and you know, he's again. I got to refresh on how to defend myself because it's it's happening all over again. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't seem that he's a Eric. It doesn't seem that he's a problem person, right? I mean. Hmm. He doesn't really go looking for trouble. Trouble finds him, but he, then he react. He is not afraid to react to it, right? He's I mean, not Eric- afraid to react, but he's not. You know, he's got a lot to learn. I, th- I think, yeah. and and it plays very. I, th- I thought about it when I watched it again. And I was like, you know, he's very. Um, I don't. I wouldn't say he's asking for it, uh, but he is kind of a, a punk in the sense that he he thinks mm-hmm. that he's tough. And he's not, and he's just, he's got a lot to, you know, uh, to deal with. I and mean, he doesn't have that, con- that, that father figure in his life. So he's, he's definitely, I think overdoing it. And a lot of the film, he, he yeah. comes off as extremely cringy. And I think that's on purpose. And that, that just goes to show how great of an actor he is because mm. he's, he plays it that way. And, you know, we, as, as an audience are reacting to that, Ooh, you know, those lines, those corny lines that he comes out, he's trying to be cool and, and he just, he just over, you know, I think he does it a little, you know, he overplays it a little too much, you know, in, as the character, but, but it's just, mm-hmm. but, and we're just kind of like, ah, you know, shaking our heads, yeah, like, you know, is, is the adolescence but, too, right? I mean, I mean, I mean cause we, we, we're awkward think, as teenagers. As yeah. But we've, we've, we've been through uh, that. So we, yeah. you know, I think we could all relate, which makes it that much more, you know, of a, of a good watch in, in that sense, because we are relating to this character. So yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Jerry, it looks like you had something. Well, I think we're. <laughs> you know, I was, I, I was one like Ralph uh, or Daniel. I think causes a lot of his problems. When we, when I watched this as a teenager, or mm-hmm. and I don't even think I was a teenager. He comes off as the hero because that's how it's presented. That's it. Watching it through, you know, 50 year old eyes. <laughs> I'm like, some of the stuff he did, he kind of deserved to get his ass kicked. Well, because I mean, it was, was all in reaction, though, right? I mean, it wasn't, he, again, he didn't. At some, at some point, <laughs> it, it could be a reaction all you want, but you're getting. I mean, okay, Zabka's the douche. I'm not going to deny that, mm-hmm. but I think Daniel brought a lot of the punishment on himself. Just, he went in with an attitude. He went, I, I just, I'm looking at it from a totally different, from a 50 year old eyes. Mm-hmm. And I'm seeing it as he was not the innocent young new kid that was just, you know, trying to make friends. Yeah. 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 He was no right from the get go. He's definitely oh, got he, a chip he, he, on his shoulder. He was he's trying. He's tra- on himself. Yeah, yeah. Did, yeah. did the Cobra Kai go overboard? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, but I don't think Daniel is as innocent in this as I thought when I was a kid watching this for the first time, who only saw it as the the hero of he yeah. rose up through all this stuff. I'm seeing it as. You're kind of doing stuff. I mean, yes. Can you kind of justify the whole uh, the the Halloween scene? He was put. He probably would not have gotten his butt kicked if he didn't right. have to mm-hmm. take on all of the Cobra Kai and do what he did. If well, what he, happened before that, though? They they pushed him down the hill in the bicycle, right? They're like, hey, you know, you want to learn yeah. karate? You learn how to take a fall. So, yeah, yeah does he? he I, I know. Would he have I'm left him alone? Sure. That, they're not, that they did not go too far. Because, I, you know, that was, that happens now. And all six of them are brought up on attempted murder charges for <laughs> pushing him down a hill. But I just don't think he helped his situation. In no, he no, he it. reacted the wrong way. I mean, yes, yeah. you know, like you, you know, two wrongs <clears throat> don't make a right kind of thing. But yeah. he's weighing over his head, yes. first of all, and he That's just, it. you know, but he just, he Not, just can't help himself but to try to prove that I could stand up to you. And maybe he just uh, doesn't have the know-how that, and the ability. You know, that's where Miyagi comes in and and, and you know, shows him the way. But that's so. also where he's 
you know, I guess you want to say that's part of his, you know, where he's showing that he does he doesn't know what to do. Yeah. He's, some, he, I don't. I mean, if we've all been in some sort of situation where we've been challenged to a point, I think you know a lot of people would know when you're overmatched. He and does you're not going to take on. Right, six or seven guys that are also karate trained and at the same testosterone level as you. I mean, he had to also expect or suspect if I'm going after Johnny's ex or whatever girlfriend, you're poking the bear and something's going to happen. Yeah. So I mean, my argument is just he's not as in it. it's it's not no as I I. As, There's a yeah. certain what you're saying is yes, it, it, there is something to agree with there. But on, on the other hand, it's like he's not. It's not intentional no, for him to be the punk of to or be. Yeah. You know, he's just trying to you know putting up that on the defensive mode. But he's just trying to be act all cool about it. And he, he thinks he knows what he's doing, yeah. and he clearly doesn't. Yeah. I think and if you look yeah, at so. the at the following, if we want to bring in all the. Um, sequel and even cobra kai he doesn't seem to learn his lesson well, no. st- he pokes Perfect. the bear just as much as johnny <laughs> is is an aggressor yeah i think they try to ennoble him the first that first beach party where he gets his, his ass handed to him is when he cheap shots johnny after he gets put he tries to put his hand out like all right all right yeah. we're even we're even uh, like yeah. Yeah. where he tried it kind of like you kind of forget the fact <laughs> that, you know that later on that it yeah uh, because of that handshake you kind of you're you're a little skewed he tried to make peace they wouldn't have it yeah and then he keeps poking the bear also but, but he uh, tries to give the handshake still in a defensive fighting mode it's not like he right. stood up and was just like we're done yeah. he, well, i think you knew he was that if they didn't to- shake hands yeah yeah mm-hmm. yeah I, I i think uh, you know uh, not to spend too much time on it, but but I, I think it also just speaks to Daniel's character that no matter what the odds, he's going to stand up for what's right. If he's being yeah. bullied, even if it's six guys, like I think he yeah, that's fair. Kind of understands yeah. that he's going to have to take some lumps, but that's he's right. not going to back down, even if he's outnumbered and outmatched, because he still keeps doing it. And he's like, I'm, I'm, you know, that was kind of the the overarching theme is is not letting anybody or the odds get mm-hmm. the best of you right and, and maybe that that's the, and, and maybe and that's and and he because, didn't handle it the right way because he just didn't have the knowledge yeah um but but that that base desire was there of yeah i'm not going to be just i'm not going to let people just run over me even if i get my ass kicked and or life and limb is put at risk <laughs> well that's a lot totally that's his lot in life isn't it i mean right. we, don't, we don't really know the circumstances of why he doesn't have a father I, it's clear i think he's just yeah. up and left so yeah, automatically he's like the man of the family. He's got to take care of his mom. So you know he's 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 got that weight. I think on you know, and that's a big load to carry when you're a kid, and especially in in, in, a, in a really bad part of Jersey, he's probably dealing with the same kind of stuff. <laughs> um, so you know he he sort of became acclimated to that being yeah. that kind of person where he's constantly having to, you know. You, you you mess with me, I'm gonna you know I might do something back, uh, but yeah, clearly he's just not favor. he's out yeah. of his element in that in that way. Yeah, that, it, so but that doesn't make a difference. Changed. I think I, I think that doesn't make a difference whether he's out of his element or not. Right. Yeah. It's it's what's right. It's kind of like yeah, yeah I'm not going to be pushed around even if I get my, my ass kicked. Now, there's also the the notion that even in Jersey he didn't have a lot of friends. Right, because mm-hmm. there's the scene when uh, when him and his when his mother gets a job at the restaurant, when he go he's gonna go, he's got to go take. I have to, t- you know. First of all, we're, we're getting yeah. a little. There's a great scene when his bike got ruined, mm-hmm. um, and he's throwing the bike in the dumpster, and and that that's where where all this exposition comes out about. Well, you didn't really ask me about moving to Jersey. Um, I have to take karate. Like I, I have to do. And she, the mother doesn't understand like, well, why, what is so important about taking karate? Like what's, I don't get it. Mm-hmm. You know? So there, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of light. Like I said, this is, this could have been a very superficial movie where he learns karate and, he, and there's a lot of fight scenes and he's fighting. And it's for a movie called the karate kid. There's actually not a whole lot of karate in it because it's more a character yeah. study about this guy, this kid, who's got problems adjusting and, and now he's in a new environment that is not even 
close to what he was used to, who didn't have a lot of friends. Cause now we get to that scene in the restaurant. And it's like, Oh, remember when you went away and you met your two best friends, Kevin and Kenny and da, da, da. And, you know, so it kind of alludes that he, he kind of is either a, a, an aloof person or just doesn't, uh, just doesn't have a lot of friends. So, mm. um, you know, I, I think having, having, not having the father obviously kind of creates that tension also. Cause yeah, he's left to fend to him for himself. He doesn't have somebody to mentor him. Right. So he kind of lashes out, Sean, it seems like that's his, his reaction to things, whether it's wrong or right is kind of um, not, it's, it's, it's ready, shoot, aim with him. Right. He does something first and then yeah. reaps the consequences. Yeah. He shoots first and asks questions later and, yeah. you know, and he, and, to his detriment, sometimes he loses. He's got oh, a yeah. temper, and, and you see, uh, yeah, and most of the time, <laughs> most of the time, yeah. For the first, the, the first three interactions are basically him just get, getting just the you know the crap beat out of him each time, you know, and, and each one kind of escalates. Um, but in, in between, they meet the maintenance man, right? The you know they when they first get to the apartment, Nick, the the faucet's not working, so go go talk to the maintenance man. And it's Mr. Miyagi is is in that little workshop area, um, who doesn't say much. He he kind of seems to in in the in the beginning, Nick. It seems like he's more of an observer, right? And that's exactly he doesn't say much. So it's this kind of slow reveal: who is this guy? What kind of personality is he? He's kind of watching them, um, and even then, when he starts training him. It's kind of this, like, what's he doing? He's making him do all his errands, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and then there's that, you know, then you realize, wow, this guy is a master. You know? mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. He's, well, he's, he's also <laughs> teaching him about life, right? And that's the, that's the whole father son dynamic that gets developed right. uh, in, in this story. Because then we learn tragically, like, that Mr. Miyagi had a family, he had a, a wife and a child on the way. They were in the internment camps in America, but meanwhile, he was in the military serving his country. Awful. Yeah. 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 I mean, what kind of 80s film deals with this kind of subject? Like has a sub a subtext or a subplot of that, right? Where like that was over my head as a kid. It wasn't yes. until I watched it much later and understood the the fact that we had internment camps in the United <laughs> States that I was like, you've got to be effing kidding me. Like it yeah. just, that, that scene just seemed like it actually slowed the movie down to me as a kid. Right. But when I was older, I was like, that's insane that that's part of this, that a part of Mr. Miyagi's backstory. Like I had no concept of that the first time I watched it. Yeah. Especially since he served his country with, with yes. dignity. Yeah. And val- he, had, he was, he was well, uh, you know, he was, he had all kinds of medals, right. Uh, commendations. And then his family was kept separated and, and, you know, the, the mother died giving birth and the child didn't live. So that kind of sets into motion that, and, and like, uh, Sean said, like, that's kind of br- brutal stuff to bring up into, into this seemingly movie about a kid that is learning karate. But it, but that just, I think that really shows you the layers of this film of how deep they're willing to go. Because like, like, Jerry said, when you're young and watching, it's like, oh my God, there's nothing happening. Like, it seems like, well, where's the karate? There's nothing happening. And much like Rocky, right, Eric, it's, it's kind mm-hmm. of, you're building a, a universe and you're building these yeah. characters and that's what makes the, the payoff <clears throat> really pay off. And, and that's what makes it genuine and not just, oh, let's have a bunch of training scenes and he gets good all of a sudden. It's like, no, mm-hmm. we, you know, we want to learn ab- about these characters. Why is Mr. Miyagi here? Why is he alone? Why does he just spend his time doing that? And then why does he become attached to this family? And why isn't he fixing the pool? <laughs> <laughs> it's a beautiful house with the, you know, the little the, the ponds and everything. And then there's, it, it, the pool has no yeah. water in it ever. Uh, he's he's living in life. Very and non-Miyagi. Weeks, that's all I was to say. Oh, Sean, sure. it took him two weeks to get to the faucet. So forget yeah. about the pool, you know. <laughs> You know, if he couldn't get to the faucet in time, it, yeah. you know, think about the pool. <laughs> um, yeah, the, the the great scene in, in, on the beach, um, which which Sean alluded to when when he meets the the friend who who lives at the same apartment complex, uh, and those friends just drop him like a rock. I mean, they oh, yeah. literally don't. I guess they don't <laughs> suffer, Nick. They don't suffer fools like you get. You take a couple shots, or or maybe they just don't want to get involved with Cobra Kai. Could that be it? It's like they just they know. 
What yeah, maybe think? they know these guys. You don't mess with them. And uh, but it, it, yeah, they he, they were so friendly at first that, that that guy, and then all of a sudden he gets beaten up, and they're just like goodbye. Like you're right, you don't even see them anymore. Yeah. So, but then but, uh, Daniel doesn't even realize it until he gets to school. Because doesn't he go up to them again? Yeah. And mm-hmm. they, like, walk away. So, like, did they just leave him bleeding in the yeah. sand? Yeah, they're like, you know, like, much. the hell with this guy? Yeah. Yeah, yeah things were, were kind of cool. But then uh, I, I guess they weren't – I guess the, the, I guess his friends were kind of used to being kind of, like, you know, like like laying down and taking it, right? Like, we're not even going to – like, if you're going to fight Cobra Kai, we're, we're just going to drop you because we don't want – to get involved with that, right? So, yeah. Like that's bad news for us. So it's, yeah. you know, and there's uh, no other rival dojos they can go to yeah. and learn karate. Yeah, and not it's not even like his yeah. friends even told him, "Hey, you know what? You should stay away from these guys because they just dropped them." So da- yeah. Daniel has to figure out the hard way that uh, you know this. You know, you keep on like like Jerry said, you keep poking the bear. They're gonna they're gonna keep clawing at you. Yeah, that's true. They never even warned them. Like yeah. we're never like, hey. You might want to avoid the guys on the motorcycles. (laughs) And the parachute pants. Yeah. (laughs) And the satin jackets. You know. If that if that wasn't a a dead giveaway in the eighties, I don't know what 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 more could you telegraph that these guys were bad news than with parachute pants? Mm -hmm. (laughs) That was just you saw somebody coming then you knew. Forget it. Bandanas around the head and yeah, yeah Rambo. Uh, you, know. <laughs> you know, yeah, these guys are just the stereotype. You know, awful, awful, awful. Um, ah, the uh, let's talk a little bit about Allie because I think I think she's kind of an, an important, even though she's kind of she kind of comes and goes in the story. She kind of seems to like drift in and drift out as a love interest, and they really have a, a kind of a they're almost like they're married already. The way they argue. Like, you know, like, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, you deal with things your way. I'll deal with things my way like that. They're already arguing when they're not even really dating yet. You know, there's but- also a scene that was cut that is apparently out there. Like when he was when he sees her kissing. In the um, in the restaurant. The dance, yeah, in yeah. the restaurant. Where he gets mad and runs out and get like not gets knocked over with. And gets like sauced spaghetti. from everywhere yeah. from his neck to his ankles. <laughs> yeah, and that goes back to what we were saying before about he reacts first and yeah. asks questions later. And that leads to the whole, you know, it took her best friend, her weird best friend, Susie. to finally to tell her, yeah. you know, that's not, you're not seeing it the way it it happened. It really happened. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, what's, what's the deal with Susie anyway? She seems just to be angry. (laughs) She doesn't like, like, she's like like the Daniel version of, doesn't like him at all. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Why don't you go die or something? She said, (laughs) clearly when when he's in the arcade and he's trying to make up and they shoot her, they shoot her with the, they shoot him with the light gun. So yeah, Yeah. really die. She's well, awesome. he's, he's just as clueless with her as, as he is yeah. with, with everyone else. Yeah. Right. I mean, it's, you know, like, oh, he thinks he's, he's, you know, being all suave and, you know, hey, you know, whatever. And she, you know, to a certain extent, it works. Obviously, she likes him, but it's just, you know, but he doesn't have to try so hard. That's yeah. the thing. It's like he's overcompensating, like every everything he's doing, interaction with these kids and trying yeah. to fit in and trying to eat, like eat, like even the next day at school, like coming up to the guys, just being totally clue. Hey, 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 man. And they don't want nothing to do with him. And he's just they don't he, he's not getting it. Yeah. And yeah. it's just, you know, he's he's just so troubled in that in that losing that common sense factor. It's like just so. And, and that's, of course, he takes it in a bad way. It's like he's taking it in a negative way and it becomes angry and, it, and it more yeah. aggressive. And that's where the punk aspect comes into play. Yeah. I think so. Yeah, it, and, and I think this that's... is happening throughout the film and this is, it takes Miyagi to kind of teach him. Yeah. Patience. That's what I was getting to. Was, yeah, yeah, it, right. So it takes that calming influence, Eric, right. Yeah. Of, mm-hmm. right. of Mr. Miyagi to kind of slow him down a little bit and kind yeah. of, you know, <laughs> that, like the, like, like the bonsai tree scene, yeah. right. It's kind of like just, Close your eyes. Think of what the tree looks like, and take make, a deep breath. And yeah, yeah kind of stuff. yeah, trying to trying to get him just to kind of slow things down a little bit. So then you'll have a, hopefully you'll have a little bit better vision, right? Or be, mm-hmm. a little bit better kind of being able to see things for the, for the way they really are. And those 
those scenes with him are, are very just the scenes between Daniel and Mr. Miyagi are very intimate scenes. They're very kind of, it's a, they're usually they're close shots. They're usually close together, like with the chopstick scene or any conversations. They're usually kind of very, very close. Right. And, and, and Nick, he becomes that, that surrogate father. Absolutely. Him. He's trying to teach him lessons all along. And, and I'm glad you mentioned the chopstick scene because here I am. Mr. Miyagi has been doing this probably for years. And the point isn't the point isn't to catch the fly. The point is you're trying and it's like meditation. And, and, and you know, Danny does it. He just like grabs it. Yeah. He's like, that wasn't the point, right? Yeah, he blows it up and like, like okay, scene. whatever. Beginner's luck, right? Beginner luck. <laughs> It's like, oh, yeah, it's like, yeah, you missed the whole point of this whole thing. It's supposed to be like this inner peace thing, and, you know, you, yeah. and, you, and you catch it. And, you you know. it. I saw that in the theater, and I remember that was a big laugh. That was a big yeah. laugh yeah. in the theater. Yeah. 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 The, the, like I said, the relationship studies that are going on here between, you know, the, there's the relationship between Daniel and Allie, the relationship between Daniel and his mother, mm-hmm. right? Because there's that whole, mm-hmm. there's that wall between them that, that the the guide the guidance of a father figure can only kind of it seems like can only kind of uh, help him with right and, and then and then there's the relationship of Daniel and, and Mr Miyagi so he's I, and, and the relationship between him and the Cobra Kai's I you know, so he's kind of managing really- a lot of different relationships you know trying to trying to get you know his relationship with Ali dialed in and figure out what that is and what the you know where it fits in and then you know straighten things out with his mom because there's tension there you know and then of course the cobra kai's and the, but then there's miyagi who's kind of guiding him through all of this almost it seems kind of providing that that calming influence to him mm-hmm. so, i do yeah. think in the book they explain the, book, the novelization yes which <laughs> there I, a marvel comics adaptation as I well i think they explain that the father and does sean died. have the comic is the other sorry to cut you off and does sean have the comic no, but I remember the action figures, which I did not own. Yeah, but I do remember I there were the action, action figures. Go ahead, sorry, sorry, Jerry. Go ahead. I think they explain that the that the mother's a widow. If I, I'm oh, remembering correctly, which okay. explains a lot as to why there's so many connections between <clears throat> Yagi and him, mm-hmm. and him needing a father. And also the tension between him and the mother, because, you know, of course, he deep down, he recognizes the mother's only trying to give him the best life that she can. And you can tell because she's always trying to be positive, even oh. when the car doesn't work and they're picking up Allie Pushing and the rich. Oh, man. And it's like, you know, deep down that he's just like he's also torn because he's like, this is embarrassing, but you have to think that he's realizes that his mother is doing everything she yeah. possibly can to make his life as good as possible. Yeah. But then the weird yeah. thing is you never see her again after like a certain point in the movie. <laughs> it's like, well, she, ah, well, she resurfaces at the end. Yeah. She kind of, she kind of floats in and out as well, yeah. you know, <laughs> uh, but Randy Heller is such a great actress. She really yes. kind of has that, that, <clears throat> Uh, there's the great scene in the beginning that after the first time he got beat up, right? And he's and she made breakfast and he's like, Oh, I'm taking it to go. And he's got the it's sunglasses, the sunglasses on. right? And she's like, Yeah, oh, you know, first it's kind of like a joke, oh, let me see your baby brown, you know, your beautiful baby browns or whatever it is. And he's like, No, and then she get becomes mother, like, No, stop, like, take, take off the glasses, yeah. you know. Uh, it's such a well acted scene from both of them. Ralph Macchio do, does a lot of uh acting just with, with his face with with expressions in that scene mm-hmm. after after the talking is done when he's deciding whether or not to take off the glasses there's a lot of subtle nuances in there and like i said i think that's what elevates this film out of the you know the the campiness of the 80s and and like i said the campiness of the title is um there, there's so much more going on um yeah. i think uh i don't know who mentioned it earlier i think sean mentioned where mr miyagi lives well that that you know Daniel has the conversation with Mr. Miyagi, like, I need to learn karate. That's the only way this is going to be solved, right? After the Halloween incident where he gets jumped by everybody. He almost, Sean, he almost made it home. Like, he's running. Yeah, so close. <laughs> That's a great <laughs> overhead shot where he's, like, running, and you see where the fence is, and there's, like, five guys descending or six guys, like, descending upon him. Like, 
almost, almost looks like something out of Jurassic Park like where like the, the dinosaurs uh, the like raptors, yeah. The, yeah, like they're running through the, the hedges. Don't go into the tall grass. Okay. <laughs> They couldn't have chosen a better costume for those guys for yeah. that party. Right. It was yeah. great for the chase scene. It was great for the fight. I got to tell you, most 80s movies especially made me terrified of going to high school. I'm like, <laughs> I'm going to get beat up. I'm going to do, you know, this is going to happen to me. That's good. like, They're high waiting. school was a scary place to, to yeah. be three headed towards <laughs> in the 80s. Yep. Every film. I'm like, I don't want to go to high school. I just want to be 10. Yeah, yeah, and and great cinematography with the shadows, right? The I think the scene with the yeah. motor when they're on the motorbikes and you see the shadows of the motorbikes. And, awesome, that that is awesome. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Shadows just, come the first. Way, yeah, yeah. The the way this was shot as well is is kind of again is going beyond what they could have just slapped at. You know, they could have slapped this on film and and kind of pumped it out and it would have been one of a hundred. Uh, but adding, but uh, Avildsen adding those cinematic touches, really taking mm. this. You know, learning, learning. You know, taking the Rocky Blueprint, right? Because that's basically it is, yeah. it's, it's the Rocky mm-hmm. Blueprint. But but then adapting, treating, treating this material as seriously, right? Mm-hmm. And I think that's the key. Is the director saying, well, you know, I made Rocky. That's an important film. This this could be that for younger people that were that can connect to this. Yeah, because it's not like Revenge, of the, like you mentioned, Revenge of the Nerds before, where it was a total comedy. Like this comes off as. A, as a drama with some comedic parts, usually by Mr. Miyagi. Yeah. So you, I think you do give it a little more, you know, credence because it's a, you're more connected to Daniel and his struggle of what he's going through yeah. because it's not a comedy. It's not slapstick. It's not, you know, there's nothing like that in it, but it's also just a fun movie to watch. You know, beyond yeah. like, you know, what we're seeing now as older gentlemen. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, and, and looking, looking through it, through the lens now, of course, we see Mr. Miyagi beating up five high school students. Yeah. <laughs> that just not fun to the shit out of him. Right. I mean, these guys are laid, these guys are laid out. Never thought of- <laughs> yeah, no. And right, Martin Cole, so and, Mar- well, and Martin Cole would be out of uh, crease would be out of business like in two seconds, <laughs> like. But that was acceptable in the eighties, like that. Oh, it's like wow, well, I, I no, he's, yeah, he's, he's teaching these kids how to kill. Yeah, you, know, you, you win it out at all costs. Like there's no, there's no defeat. No, I mean this guy's a maniac. You guys feared adults when you were kids, right? Like oh, yeah. not only that yeah. they would yell at you, but they yeah. might put their hands on you, even if they weren't right. your parents. Like that's, right. that's how it's like crazy. That was like normal thinking for us back then. Now it's like <laughs> kids don't even fear adults in any shape or form. No. Nick, Nick how's, this for a fan, how's this for a fan theory, Nick? Maybe Crease, when he was in Vietnam, his drill instructor was R. Lee Ermey from Full Metal Jacket. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm going to put that fan theory out there that the Karate Kid exists in the same universe as Full Metal Jacket. Well, I mean, R. Lee Ermey had to be his drill instructor to make Crease. <laughs> you know, there, there's something there. Was, um, that I heard. This is my rifle. Did, is it is it true Chuck Norris was offered the role, but I think turned it down because he was like, eh, it's yes. not like it, it's it, yeah. it's too violent. I don't b- follow that kind of you know martial arts where no, he would you're never teaching kids. right. Yeah. But that's where this this character and I could totally yeah. see that maybe you know it might not you know be that connection and fan theory, but um, yeah, he surely has this dark side, and this is how. You do it. It's just like you know, bullies are, are yeah, bullies no because mercy. they've been bullied. So he was taught no mercy, and that's how he teaches everybody else. It's almost Fear, stereotypical at this point, this isn't it? Yeah, you know, it when you Absolutely. when you think about like these the dudes, even that uh, SNL skit with Bill Hader with the puppet, yeah. where he's like, I know we we were around, and the, you know, seven <laughs> clicks out, and he's like telling these like horrific <laughs> stories, and you know, and that's that's Crease. Like you know, he obviously has been through some shit. You know, yep. he's like two stones away from like Beringer and Platoon. Right. Like he might yeah, as well yeah. have a freaking scar on his face. I yeah, mean, he's, he's, teach, and he's teaching the these kids like about war. And like they're, they're clearly not at war here. I mean, these are kids, you know, and you're teaching them this stuff. And it's yeah, finish like, him when he's down. Finish him. You know, hit, get the kill yeah. strike. You know, like yeah. kind of really uh, what what was perce- I mean, at the time that was perceived being a man. Like his that was his idea of what a man is. Right, and yeah, then it was I think, a little I think, different I think when my son took karate. Say again? It, it, it did not look like that when my son <laughs> just took karate within yeah. the last decade. They were like, 
let's you know help each other. We're working together. Right. <laughs> yeah. I'm yeah. And, and, and I, Where's Creech? I want my son <laughs> to kick some ass. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> and, and and I think there's a there, I think there's another another level there, right? I think this movie might be discussing of what what does it mean to be a man? Does it mean being macho and and no mercy, right? Because you, you're you're be, we're being fed that and and those kids are being fed that and they're buying into it. But then Daniel who wanted to go there, he thought that that's what you needed to be mm-hmm. is, is learning how to be a man in a different way, right? About, and what this movie ultimately about is about is balance, right? Mm-hmm. The kids in Cobra Kai have no balance. All they have is the, the <laughs> they have the rage, right? They're being fed rage. Yeah. It's yeah. all they're being fed. And, and, you know, Mr. Miyagi is telling, is, is trying to, get daniel to understand that karate is is not used as for aggression it's used for defense you don't want to fight but if you have to here's what you do here's how a man acts you don't go looking for trouble right but if trouble finds you you're you're prepared to deal with it you know so i and so i think there's an, another kind of another level there right we just, sure. we kind, of, kind of talk that out about crease and and how he's acting um, and, and the fact that, that, you know, they, they don't show the parents of any of the Cobra Kai. So we don't know what their, you know, relationships are with anybody. Um, but I, th- I think there's, a, Nick, I think there's another, right? Yeah, it's I absolutely. I think last time we talked about it, um, I, I mentioned that where it's like, I don't think Mr. Miyagi expected Daniel to win. You know, I think the whole point was he, he's, this is part of his journey to learn, yeah. you know, yeah. what karate really is. You know, it's in the heart and the head, not the belt. It's it's not about vengeance. It's, you know, so, you know, all this time when you see Daniel kind of when they said, OK, there's a truce until the tournament, no fighting. And you see Daniel go in there and like, you know, starting the fights, you know, and, and this is where yeah. like it's it's but it's believable. You know, you, you think he's being douchey and you're like, oh, why is he doing that? It's all part of that learning process because then by the end, I don't think he would have done that if he could go yeah. back. Well, in but he time. also needed to, he also needed to prove that to Ali, right? Because Ali's like, "Oh, right. there's the Cobra Kai," and he's like, "No, watch, it's cool," you know. And he kind of yeah. went over. It. So yeah, did, did he leverage that a little bit more to kind of really dig it to him a little bit? Yeah, sure he did. Yeah, but but like but, but Nick, like you said, um, none this I don't th- this film was never about winning a trophy. Right. Right. Yeah. It was it was ne- the goal was never winning the trophy. And, and like like you said, and, and Mr. Miyagi and Daniel never thought that that the trophy, the trophy was the thing. It was the thing for the Cobra Kai's. Right. The, you know, that was Martin Cove's thing was like, win, take out, you know, I don't care. Scorched earth. Even if you got my guys have to get <laughs> squalified. Right. We're, we're taking, you know, we're going to take him out no matter what it is. So there's at least one Cobra Kai left standing. Um, and then Daniel learns. That this is, it's not, and, and even Mr. Miyagi, right? Mr. Sean, you said it. Mr. Miyagi's like, you know, it's win, winning or losing is not important. And he's right. But mm-hmm. it, but in this case, winning was important because it was what was needed to achieve balance, right? And that, and that comes into that whole Daniel monologue at the end, right? Is, if you know, if I don't win, they'll know they got the best of me. Even though I put up a good fight, it, it won't be complete, you know, and mm-hmm. I won't, and then they'll, you know, it'll always be in the background with my relationship with Allie, right? I'll never have the balance with, with anybody. And then he said, not with myself either. And that was the, I think the moment of enlightenment for the character where all this stuff kind of came swirling into this one statement of I'll, I'll never have balance in my life. And he understood. Right. And and that's where Miyagi, Sean goes to, he does his thunderous clap and the music <laughs> smells and he's, Rubbing the hands together, you know, because we had seen that earlier in, in the in the the uh, karate technique reveal scene where his shoulder was hurting, um, and he gets just that swell of excitement. It's like, oh shit! Yeah. Here we yeah. go. If Here only go. they did Star Wars this way. <laughs> it's, the, it's, it's like the best Star Wars movie. It's not even Star Wars, you know. It's like it's that's what the Jedi. That's exactly what Star Wars should be telling us. And now we got all kinds of shit being thrown, being thrown at us. Like, yeah. yeah. So, but yeah, but I mean, so, as something as simple as this, as, as oh, yeah. well, not quite so simple, but yeah, part of the journey is, is learning defense and not, you know, and, and not having a, a hot head and, yeah. And, well, and, and but, the thing I like to point out too, is the fact that, I mean, I, I, I let me ask you, I mean, who, who, uh, you guys have all seen Cobra Kai? I haven't. I saw the so, first yeah. season and then it oh, moved I, off of YouTube. Or I think after the second season it moved. All off right. YouTube, so Johnny's so. character is now the good guy in the, in the, in the show. Right. Am I correct in that? It's, uh, it's, well, they, they, or... 
they just start taking it from his point of view. He's not necessarily a good guy because he's kind of broken down. He's you know got yeah. he's drinking and okay, you know, but he, he's he's kind of lost is okay. really what it is, and he's kind of looking yeah. for something to kind of re refocus his life, and it becomes he decides to you know reopen Cobra Kai, and then and Daniel had long left that life. He's like got used car, or he's got car dealerships. He's like known as the car you know king. Yeah. Of, mm of the valley or whatever you know so so they, they you know it, it's a great way that they handled the, the story they didn't just kind of jump in they really took their time with the first season with johnny of him just kind of okay wallowing you know st- you know in the in the one bedroom apartment with the bottle and and then go into the place and see if he can rent it you know i would say the first season centers around johnny predominantly and then it kind of evens out I've I've seen all yeah. the seasons, but yeah. Then they start bringing everybody in from the and, past. And it's great. I I think it's great. I I, I think yeah. it's 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 getting a little soap opera ish too, but exactly. All together, I love it. I'm all in. I can't wait for the final season. It, it and, occurred. It occurred to me that the watching it again that the end of this when when Johnny <laughs> says to him, "You're all right." Right. To me, that that's it right there. Yes. Yeah. That's yeah. the, the, the respect. And I think, the, you know, the character of Johnny, we don't see it happen. We don't we don't know what he's go- actually really dealing with inside having this maniac train him. Perhaps, you know, who, what kind of family life does he have? We don't know. Why is he being such an asshole all the time? You know, I think he sees something in Daniel of himself uh, that he kind of, you know, maybe some of that channeled through Daniel and, and at the end what Miyagi was teaching him was like, you know what? Fuck this guy in this guy, this, this, yeah. this creep that we've been listening to all this time. And this guy, you know, what am I doing? Like, you know, I yeah. think that's well, I think, the, you know, yeah, I think they all started to see that. Yeah. You make a really good point is because at the tournament, when, when the guy, I forget what the kid was, he was going to fight Daniel. He's like, I, I can beat him though. Yeah. And yeah. He's, he's like, like, no. He's like, no. John Ritter's, John Ritter's long lost son. The guy looks like John. <laughs> and, and, and he's like, no, sweep the leg or, or you know, not sweep the leg, take his knee out or whatever. And the kid, you know, and that, that kid, you saw it in his face. You see it in the face of the, the kids behind him. They start to kind of realize that this is not, the speed, like yeah, competition and 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 dominate your foe within the within the competition thing. But this is going beyond that now. This is like physically hurt this person because we want to. There's a lot in his face that is like really yeah. well. Like it's like you don't really. I mean, at the time you're like not, but like you look at his face now and like that realization of like I got if I don't do this, what's going to happen to me if I don't do this? Even though I know it's wrong. I'll, yeah, I can't go back to that dojo. Will I lose my friends? Will I lose everything? Yeah. And as soon as he does it, he's like, "I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, dude." You know, like, and so like, yeah. even. And by the way, when he says, "I'm sorry," he's it's done for him after that, also probably. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. He also is the one, isn't he? The one that tries to stop Johnny I on Halloween. I think so. He's I like, think he's so. Had enough. Yeah, he's like he's and had enough. Can also, yeah. see when Johnny's told. Uh. To, when Johnny, the uh, leg, right? He, you could see in Johnny's face that he's yeah. like, "This is just wrong. This yeah, is like yeah. that doesn't seem right. I'm not going to beat him," which is kind of where Johnny starts to realize this is. And then there's, I think we talked about the scene that starts the sequel was supposed to end this movie. Yeah. Yep, is when Crease beats the or goes to beat the crap out of Johnny for yeah. losing. Destroys yeah. the, you know the second place trophy and Mr Miyagi beats him up but then shows mercy. Yeah. So it's a whole which I think could have helped the end. But then like to go back to the Cobra Kai thing, the first season shows Johnny like as their their lives just totally turn like me uh, yeah. Daniel Larusso is a success and Johnny just stops growing up. Like all mm. his loves, everything he's tied to is all still in the eighties. His music, his uh, yeah. his clothes, everything. Like he just that's it. He's done maturing, yeah. and it's like that's why that first season is really good because yeah. you also see like how troubled, yeah, Johnny. Like this, this screwed up his life. Yeah, this one so event kind of moved on. Yeah, mm. but Johnny was done. Like he did. 
basically nothing for the rest of his yeah, life in high school. Yeah. Yeah. Devastated. Yeah. Absolutely. He's, he's, he's a great villain. And usually the great villains are the ones that don't see themselves as villains. There's a, it's yeah. so well-rounded, you know, um, that's why that ending is so believable. You, you believe that, you know, he said, you know, he, he had that turn. It's not like it just comes out of the blue because right. throughout yeah. the whole movie, <laughs> He's justifying everything he does. He thinks he's doing the right thing and, by and going think, after well, Allie. Yeah, you know? and, and Nick, I also think it's because Daniel kept coming back for more, right? That he stood his ground as well and then was able to, in this case, was able to end up backing it up by winning the tournament. But but I think all those pieces, because right. all the other, like I'm sure the Cobra Kai's don't respect any of those beach guys, right? Because they run away and they don't do anything. But Daniel, at first he was like a, he, at first he was like a nuisance, Mm-hmm. You know, but then yeah. even even at that scene when uh, like what like when when Daniel went up to them in school and was like, "Hey guys, how's it going?" Like like there was still that like there was almost a relationship forming between him and the Cobra Kai's, even though they wanted to kick the crap out of him. There was still like that kind of adversarial friendship. Well, that was almost developing like 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 oh, here's somebody that you know is is going to kind of come back at us, and yeah, we want to destroy him when we get a chance. But I, I think there was a respect that was starting to be built, and then once. Daniel won, and jo- and then and Johnny saw how Crease was. He's like, yeah, you know what? You're all right, kid. You you know, kind of, mm. you know, despite all the crap that we tried, you know, we tried to cr- we tried to cripple you <laughs> twice, not once, but twice. I want to know how the best guy at the tournament lost. That guy that does like the windmill, yeah. windmill, windmill, windmill. It's like I'm like, that's the best guy there. And he, he went out he, pretty quick too. He, he went know, out he, pretty quick. It's like, yeah. I don't, I don't think he was 18 he either. That was the a lot sure, that was the under 18. Yeah, he did look like he was about 25 years old. Yeah. So. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but he felt like a ton of bricks. It's like, okay. Yeah, and, and there was that one heavy set Cobra Kai that got knocked out. We never saw him. He got right. like in the stomach. And like Johnny's like shaking his head like you know like, yeah, why the Revenge you, of the Nerds guy. Why you let this guy in the the the, uh, the Revenge of the Nerds. Uh, one of the nerds was Cobra Kai guy. Oh really? Is that really the guy from? Revenge yes, it of the is. Nerds? Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. The one who, the one who uh, yeah, I don't remember the names of the. I haven't seen he Revenge got, of the Nerds and got kicked in the stump. The one that got kicked in the stomach, or I guess I don't know. He lost to Daniel. Oh, Daniel beat him. Daniel beat. Wow, oh, well, I he, forgot he the character's name. Uh, what, what we didn't talk about, we didn't talk about the training scene, like the, the marvelous reveal. Now it's it's so taken for granted. Right. Um, even I, I watch people, I watch reaction videos of the Karate Kid. So younger, like Gen, I don't know, Gen Zs are watching it and they're kind of making comments as they do it. And a lot of them actually are predicting like, oh, this it looks like he's going to learn how to train this way. Back then, this was a total shock. Am I, I mean, total. Yeah. right? This was like yeah. this came out of nowhere. We weren't expecting like, you know, painting the house, <laughs> sanding the floors, doing all this stuff was going to lead to this miraculous. And probably it's still I, I for me. I don't know. You guys can tell me. It still it still gives me goosebumps. <clears throat> yeah. Right, Eric. I mean, I mean it's, it's, it's a, a yeah. reveal, you know, and and it's because Ralph Macchio sells it. He's, he's like he doesn't understand what's going on. It's like, you know, paint the, you know, sand the floor and he goes to get, no, get up. <laughs> like stupid. Don't literally do it. You know, like he's trying to yeah. try to, re- he's trying to reveal to him what he's trained him. And, and Daniel still isn't picking up on it. Like, like, no, stand up and do it. You know, his muscle memory. Like, uh, how, I mean, he did that for hours and hours. And he, and he, he tried, he goes, no, 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 like this. And, you know, like very like mm-hmm. particular yeah. about the strokes. Cause he's like, all right, let me, let me paint the house. He's like, no, 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 no. You got to do it this way. And you're like, this guy's a nut. Why is he so particular about this stuff? <laughs> right. Yeah, and then that know. happens and you're like, oh, that's why you had to paint that way. Yeah, Wax. right, Eric. That that scene went like when he when when Mr. Miyagi starts throwing all these punches and kicks, and he's just doing it. Yeah, and he and even mm-hmm. Daniel's amazed, right? For me, that's still that's still like a, a yeah, the shock on his face. Like, what the hell did I just yeah. do? Like, that, yeah. it's, a, it's a great cinematic yeah, I'm moment. Talking about it because it's just one of those great reveals. Yeah, and it just I, shows. I mean, it, and again, I you know Miyagi yeah. might have been testing him in the sense of it, it's all about patience. Of course, yeah. he gets angry. You know what? The, you know you I'm make. I'm slave with what I. Am. Yeah, right. And yeah, I'm doing your house and this and that. And he's, like, he's Daniel's son. You know, and he's like walking away, and he just you know, 
Yeah, he's Show like, now's the time. Yeah, now I'm going to reveal. Now's, to now's the time, you know, it all comes out. But he, yeah, because he, he's at the point where he might lose it. Like, it was almost at the right, point yeah. where he might lose Daniel. So he's like, I kind of. He might have he kept going yeah. with him. Yeah. Like, he might have kept making him do all kinds of, you know, more stuff even. But, uh, yeah. but yeah, it was such a great, great scene. Yeah, such a yeah. great yeah. reveal. You know? Seeing it as a kid, it's like. I, I really thought Mr. Miyagi was just taking advantage of him. I'm like, when's he going to start training him? You know, and, and and because you know they make this promise. He's like, if you know, if you if you stick with me, you know, I'm going to teach you. So I'm like, so when's he going to hold up his end of the bargain? Because yeah. poor Daniel's been doing it. I'm like, I would have given up after a certain point. You know, <laughs> so that that scene, you know, it's like it's kind of like he takes off the mask and he's like, here it is. This is and it's, I've been teaching yeah, I mean, you all along. You know, if, if that was me, he probably would have gotten a day's worth of work, if, if, especially <laughs> if I wasn't getting paid. And I did. I'm like, knowing me back then, I'd be like, this isn't for me. I, I don't need karate that bad either. As <laughs> like, soon as you walked up to the just the stuff sitting there to paint the house, <laughs> you paint your own damn house. It's almost <laughs> it's almost magical in a way, isn't it? It's like yeah. Miyagi becomes this <laughs> mystical figure all of a sudden. He's absolutely. Just like, yeah. It's right you know, at that like, moment. You're like, wow. You know, yeah. yeah, he lives I, in this beautiful oasis, right? right. Yeah, it's kind of like this, yeah. this magical place that he's in. In this, yeah, this it almost really feels like a uh, like one of the, the what's the animator? You know, the the Studio Ghibli. Yeah, this Miyazaki. Be, Miyazaki. This could be yeah. something like that he had done, or I yeah. guess if you're a fan of like kung fu movies or karate movies, uh, you probably would have picked up on it. Yeah. You know, but. And and it can, becomes the trope of the, the the mentor doing you know making them do all this crazy stuff that it's not exactly training them how to fight but it's like they're doing you know and that becomes the thing but it's like but in this case it just it's totally unexpected you just you don't see it uh, it's so subtle and it, it just works and yeah and, and, and like, I like think, Dean said even now it's it just yeah it still holds up yeah, yeah. and and I think it helps cement their relationship because then you get the scene with the. The birthday, yeah, right, and and, yeah. and Mr. Miyagi gives Daniel the gi, the, the the uniform with the patch that his wife made, and and Daniel says, "I I, I know how important this this is yeah. to you. So if you want it back, like he's starting to kind of kind of realize that it's not just about the 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 attire, right? Because he's mm. like, what kind of belt do you have?' He's like, oh, J.C. Penny, two ninety five, canvas." <laughs> You know, it, like like for Miyagi, it's not about that. It's not about the trappings of karate. Whereas with the, co- the cobras, it is. It's about the belt and and jo- jogging together and having the the patches. And and Miyagi's like, no, this is just an a, an aspect of your life, mm-hmm. right? This yeah. is a, a, a tool for you to have in case if you need. And and the philosophies can help guide you through life, right? And and, and kind of help you manage all these other things. Whereas, whereas the Cobras or the Kais are just being taught violence, right? Like we said, yeah. we kind of established that that's a whole other thing where Daniel is on more of a path of, of personal enlightenment. And again, that's where they sneak into this movie. They sneak this stuff in there. Yeah. yeah. You know? Well, the Cobra Kais are learning to use it in life also. <laughs> <laughs> you run rough shot over the valley, like, you know, <laughs> You have, you know, motorbike gang, you know, yeah. pushing random kids down the hill and just ro- rolling joints in the bathroom. I mean, you know, they they were they were partying pretty hard in the eighties. It's also very very respectful of the culture. Daniel yeah. learning yeah. about his his life and his culture, and he, and you can see the 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 genuine re- respect there, the yeah. awe of, of yes. Daniel, like learning about this stuff, and he genuinely you look you, you you're convinced that he is. In for the in for the long haul at this point yeah. because yeah. he's just so respectful of this man. Even you know? the pronunciation of his name, you know, at the yeah. end, like yeah. at first he's he's right. mistaken the name, and then at the end when they mispronounce it, he corrects them at the end. Yeah. I just yeah. love that. that that's, yeah, you know, even yeah. even when Daniel gets uh, gets beat up and and Miyagi's tending to him and he gives him a cup of tea, and he shows mm-hmm. him how to hold it, pro- you know, hold yeah. your palm out and put and. And Daniel does that. He 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 gets shown how to properly hold that that cup of tea in your hand, and you yeah. and you drink it. And he does that, right, Erica? You you really hit that where it's kind yeah. of this this whole other culture. The bones, you know, and that's a great thing where where there's bonsai, but then there's bonsai, right? When he gets in the car, he's like bonsai, Daniel, and Daniel's like bonsai. He's like no bonsai. bonsai. You know, yeah. <laughs> the whole, you know, it's, it's, it's subtle the subtle nuances, and that's a great scene too when. When when Mr. Miyagi gives him the car, uh, yeah. and Daniel's like, "You're you're the best friend I've ever had." The car but, that he whacks for hours, yeah. 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 yeah, right. But 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 that's it. but that just that whole line just kind of 
it, it kind of encapsulates the loneliness of Daniel then. It really shows that, that it took this, man, this older guy to not only be a father figure, but to be an understanding friend, right? And advise him like a friend and not necessarily like a father. So when he's like, yeah. you know, you're the best friend I ever had, you know, and, and we get, I'm, I'm glad that, that Miyagi didn't say me too, or you too, or you're like the son, you know, it's kind of like, you're, you're pretty okay too. Like he kind of, that was his way of, <laughs> right. Of, of kind of acknowledging it and saying it, but he didn't, we didn't need him to come out and say exactly say it, Sean, right. Yeah. It was, I think it was better that he kind of, you know, you're, you're pretty yeah. okay too. Yeah. yeah. But that's a, it's a great moment. And one that I forgot about when I, uh, th- when I watched it, I was like, mm-hmm. Oh wow. Yeah. That's like, yeah, it's better that he didn't say you're like the father I never had. You're like my long lost son. It just is perfect right where it is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It kind of le- it levels the playing field. There's that, there's that respect there. Um, and a sadness too, a little yeah. bit about it as well. Yeah. yeah. That, like I said, that, that, that Daniel feels like this, this person, is the you know what, what must have his life had been like before he probably had friends but not anybody that was really close probably because of whatever troubles he got into um let's talk about some favorite scenes as we we wind down uh, you know we talked about obviously the training scene so we'll kind of cut we'll take the training scene out because that's too easy and then we'll take the end out because that's too easy <laughs> although there was a cool thing like after when Miyagi goes to work on Daniel's knee and, and then they cut to the tournament and the guy's about to give the trophy out and <laughs> Ali comes running up and you hear was like, Daniel LaRusso is going to fight. It's like, the, like, the, you know, it wasn't like this big reveal. It was just kind of like, like he just got the information and he said it and it happened to be mm-hmm. over the microphone. Like oh, Daniel LaRusso is going to fight. And it's like, Daniel LaRusso is going to fight, you know? And it's kind of, and then he comes like limping out and, and they're like, he's like, are you okay? And he's like, yeah, you know, Again, like like it gave us what Rocky gave us too, and but in a different way, right? Yeah. And, 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 you know, the same type of thing that underdog, not giving up type thing, but they didn't parrot Rocky exactly, but it was close enough where you can kind of be like, oh yeah, okay. Well, the crane was also a nice a nice surprise uh, yeah. because you saw Miyagi doing it and practicing it in you know the silhouette of him doing it on the little. Mm-hmm. St- post at the beach mm-hmm. and then when you see him just put his arms like that you're like oh no you know it's like is it you know <laughs> here it comes and i i think in, if, uh, if i if memory serves in cobra kai they actually used a different shot from karate yes. Kid. in his memory there was a reverse shot or there was a close-up of him getting the foot Some in the b-roll paper. stuff yeah. yeah yeah they they actually used the, the unused footage from karate kid in, yeah. in karate's flashback when he was remembering it Mm. Or him hitting the floor, right? Or him like the hitting illegal. the floor yeah. and stuff like that, right? When he fell out, I don't recall. It's been so long, but uh, yeah, yeah, I don't, yeah. It's uh, yeah, that last fight. There's a couple times where you're like, "How did Johnny not just win?" It's like, no, no, it wasn't a good one. It's like, <laughs> no point because I'm like, no point. It just like, <laughs> I don't know. It it, it was it's yeah. yeah they, they do you think it? Let me, uh, can I ask you a question? Do you think it would have been? What if he had lost at the end? What do you think? Like Rocky lost loses in the first one, and we but then it would have been too much like Rocky. I think almost yeah. is that what? Yeah, it would not. Have, I don't think it would have resonated because it's a kid. It's I just I don't think I would not be sitting here talking about this movie if he lost. It would have, <laughs> because I was too. I would have been too young to understand. To me, I would have been like, hey, well, he lost. What the what yeah. the f is that? Like, I wouldn't have been yeah. able to see the. Because to me, yeah, it's it just an action movie. Yeah, yeah, it's it's different. It's different from ba- the Bad News Bears, where they lose, and it's still right. satis- it's still satisfying because it was the journey. Mm-hmm. But with with Karate Kid, you know, Daniel stated he stated the purpose. He goes, I I need to win, not for yeah. the trophy, right? But I need right. to have that that bal- I need to have the balance of my life. That's why this is important. Not yeah. like Rocky, he wanted to win the title, but it it, it you know. With Rocky, it was the fact that he went the distance was good enough. Like that showed that he had what it takes, yeah. you know, and that was fulfilling. But for 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 Daniel, it was he needed to solve a whole bunch of problems with his mom, with his with Ali, with the Cobra Kai's, and the only thing, way he saw that it was going to do that achieve balance was by winning. Right. So not, you know, the trophy didn't mean anything. It was it was the act of completing it. Because Creed wasn't this evil person that he ah. had to overcome. Right. It was more the rising up, like 
Danny had to beat the bad guy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he yeah, was if Chris, if Chris, yeah Rocky if Chris was got the trophy, <laughs> he'd be like, okay, I did it. Yeah. Whereas Apollo won, but in his mind, he's like, the guy went the distance. Everybody says, yeah. you know, I shouldn't have. Got, like, so it was yeah. creeping on him. Chris yeah. wouldn't have cared. He'd be like, we did what we had yeah. to do. Let's yeah. move on. <laughs> you know? yeah, he, yeah, that whole thing needed to be subverted because then you, like like you said, then Johnny had his his turn, right? His character yeah. turned in the end also. So if, if he had lost a lot of that stuff. But let's say. They said flag on the plate, illegal kick, right? <laughs> like you knock Johnny, they where is that? No, it was an illegal <laughs> kick. I don't know. That might have been a little interesting. I, I you know. Then they <laughs> still, out he's still, the parking lot. He still kicked the you still knocked him to the ground. You thought he won. <clears throat> no, no, the judges have said that's an illegal <laughs> kick. Sorry. <laughs> But then, Sean, the first season of Cobra Kai would have been. I know, I know. I know. Listen, <laughs> hey, Johnny's having all the the, the but car They lines. solved it in the in the end of the movie. My cousin point is like they they said you're all right. Why yeah. is there still a problem all these years later? Why is there a Cobra Kai? I'm like, stop yeah. it. That's I, very true. You know, I love Cobra Kai. Don't ruin it for me, please. <laughs> the the adrenaline one. rushes out of Johnny, and he realizes that Danny is not all right. Yeah, Danny's that's an illegal <laughs> kick. Yeah. Yeah, that's what that's could have been what it was. Let's go around quick with, with one one favorite scene. Nick, what do you got? That's a favorite scene. Um, it's got to be the fight with the when they're all dressed as skeletons. Right. And I love the fact that that was the choreographer getting his students to be there. You know, that's why they wore the skeleton masks and all that stuff. So that that was really good. Although I know I know you said we can't use the training scene, but I love yeah, the I fence, the fence scene. You know, it's like because you look and you're like wow, you got to paint this whole fence. And he's like, on the other side, <laughs> the, the other side. side too. It's not just, I love that. He's like, oh, you went fishing this morning? He's like, yeah, I went fishing. <laughs> <laughs> Jerry, favorite, favorite scene, what do you got? My favorite scene is the, uh, I guess it's the first date when they're at the, just because it brings me back to a more innocent time when you could play video games, uh, that hockey game, you could go Thanks. mini golfing. There was a mm -hmm. random gigantic slide. Yep. It just was like a, I don't know why. It Probably for ten dollars. That too. Probably about ten bucks. <laughs> yes, it was just with dinner. It just brought me back to a more innocent time. Yeah, That's social media. Yeah, yeah. I, I do. Have, I do have to say that you know this. This movie is most like what I would associate growing up in the eighties too. even yeah. though I didn't live in California, just the, the vibe, the way the kids acted, the clicks, uh, everything, the stuff in school, like, like all of that, even though it's Hollywood and, and idealized, it's still for me, when I watch this film, it's like, this is almost like time travel. I can remember yeah. Yeah, like, like the arcade and going and everybody's out on Friday night. And even if you didn't know them or hang out with them, there's just people there that you saw mm -hmm. or you knew and, and that, that whole scene or someone's mom was dropping them off. Like all that stuff was like real to, to like back in yeah. the 80s. You know, kids mm -hmm. weren't just driving around as much. You know, you had to get a ride from somebody and, and do, you know, kind of figure out on your own. So, yeah, for me, when I watch this, it's like it's like time travel. It's like going. And the soundtrack brought me back like yeah, the Anoramas, yeah. Cruel Summer. You know, yes. that just makes me makes me think of that year, you know, the mid 80s. And, you know, I just it, I love the closing fantastic. credits. I love the moment of truth by Survivor. Uh, love yeah. it. Yep, yep. Great, yeah. great, Sean, great credit roll. What, what favorite you, scene? Favorite scene. Yeah. My yeah, my new favorite scene uh, I, is when Daniel goes to Cobra Kai and he's scoping it out, and Chris tells Johnny to lead, and when they all bow to him, he, they have eye contact, and Johnny gives him that. Oh, and, oh how you doing? And and Daniel goes, oh man, like uh, he's like. <laughs> I know what I'll do. I'll go to the dojo and learn karate so I can kick Johnny's up. Johnny goes to this dojo too. Awesome. <laughs> and, and then it, I love that part. And then his mom is like, oh, how's the karate? Yeah. Like, oh, no. She goes, good. We can't afford it anyway. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, thank God. Yeah. And then the insanity like, oh, in the background. Care at all that the bully is there. Right? <laughs> when they all leave and they're all yeah. like, they realize he's sitting in the restaurant yep. and then they plan to murder him. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you see them all like coming out. Like, yeah. They're gathering and they're that. looking at them. Yeah. That's like happening yeah. during their conversation. It's like happening, happening in the background. It's yeah, like, oh, I, I never, I never caught that before. You know, after yeah. uh, I think the first time we watched it for the when we were talking yeah. about it the first time. But um, Eric, what do you got? Is it my turn? Okay, go um, oh, for it. Well, aside from the obvious I and mean, with the scenes we can't mention, but I also <laughs> like the scene on the beach 
with the two thugs on the beach and they're sitting on the car and he's like, yeah. you know, please yeah. remove scene, please. Larry and Drake. Like, oh yeah, yeah. He comes up. He just <laughs> Miyagi just like you know with the bottles and and it's like and again that 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 what the you know mis- mysticism type of thing yeah. happened and like and he's like it's the first time I ever did that. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah, you know, like I love that. I love that line. He's like, I don't know. It's the first time I ever did that. So it was like I love that. I also love yeah. the scene where before the you know ali is really great in this too it's like yeah. her acceptance of everything that daniel the people in daniel's life her his mom mm-hmm. yeah the you know miyagi like a, a very like there's that it doesn't take much for her to respect these people and and when they're going into the into the, the tournament and what that scene with the great scene with the with the where he takes the belt on oh, the guy's bag yes. you know the guy's signing him in and he t- takes the black oh he's black belt yeah okay and he gives it to her and she and she's just in on I mean she's so quick and she's so she's so great and and, and that's she has to be his translator yeah. that's how right she gets yeah. yeah not the most yeah. honest moment but not the most honest Miyagi moment right there <laughs> but yeah but he yeah. had to do what he had to do he right had to do. yeah and, and Eric and you, <laughs> little you raise, fibs little fibs you, Eric you raise a fantastic point about Allie and I think it's because her parents are so distant and kind of yeah. that that she really yeah she latches on to like Daniel's mother and she likes like these like salt of the earth like real people Right. Yeah. And she's tired yeah. of like these phony, you know, the Cobra Kai's and even the parents are like, oh, Ali, you're going to see that boy again from the valley? You know, like, yeah. yeah. Oh, she's like, what's the big deal? Like, you know, she's yeah. kind of not, doesn't fit into her own world. Right. And that's why yeah. she, and yeah, she's so accepting of like, yeah, he's just, he's well, kind of the scene where, she, where he's on, right. where he's, yeah. uh, where Daniel's on the steps, the front steps of the yeah. house. Picking and, the the, and the parents just like slowly pull up and they're walking up and they're giving him the eye, like, you know, like, who knows? Yeah. You're not guy, going you know? to see that boy again. Yeah. Dad. Yeah. Daniel. Yeah. And then he's got the spaghetti on him two seconds. Later. Uh, it's like a horror film. It's like he's like he's like laying at it. He can't move. It's like he just keeps rolling it. It's like, like a turtle on his back. Yeah. <laughs> you should have saw it coming because he's wearing that red jacket too. Like you know, like with the white suit. Yeah, like the- and, I'm and surprised they didn't shoot it in slow motion. Just like yeah. <laughs> And, and you know what? If you've ever worked at a restaurant, you know you don't look out that that door because that's no. the one that people are going to. That's the enter door. If you work it, never worked in a restaurant, that's the enter door. You don't stand in the enter door. You're gonna get way. That's late, right. Yeah. Which which he did. He got just wailed. <laughs> oh God. Oh, so so many great scenes. Um, hard, hard to pick. Uh, I, I think I, I mentioned it earlier and I, and I keep going back to it because I think it was kind of pivotal was the bike scene after he, he got pushed, pushed down the hill hmm. and he's bringing the bike and he throws it in the dumpster and he's raging. You know, no one's there. He doesn't know what his mother's there. He's like, this stupid bike, I you know, hate it. And, you know, he, he's, fr- he's frustrated about everything. It, like it all comes to a head and they have that conversation in front of Miyagi's door. And he doesn't come out, but you know that the light is on and, and he's hearing this. I got to take karate. I got to do this. And, mm-hmm. you know, and that whole thing, it wasn't fair. You didn't ask me. And she's like, that's not fair. It's a, you know, kind of like a cheap shot. You know, that was a real, again, real conversation. Not, not like, not Ferris Bueller's day off mother and father. Yeah. They yeah. Were, the they're they're there for comedy relief. <laughs> yeah. They're there for comedy relief. They're supposed to be like doofy. Yeah. But this idiots. was real relationship <laughs> stuff. Real, real mother and son without a father relationship stuff that that they were going through um and then at the end when 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 the mother's like oh you did so great and you would have won and she's trying to be like i said she's trying to be a mom you know she's trying to just kind of you know still not understanding all the ramifications like like she doesn't understand how deep this goes and and we don't find that out and again until we get that monologue as well like how where like where this is you know the, the payoff comes from so i think that the scenes with randy randy heller are really good because she's just really She's just fun to watch. She's such a great actress. She's very natural. Mm-hmm. She's a great, you know, when I tell you to pop it, pop it, you know, she's just really yeah. kind of going, you know, she's really she's unbelievable. Yeah, yes. she's that mom. Yeah. And they're like, hey, Mrs. LaRusso. She's like, hey, guys. And she's not really, like, oh, really yeah. they're clowning on her. You know, but, but so she just really plays that role just really well. So anything that, any scene that Randy Heller is in really, it's kind of, for me, it was, was really good because it, it, it lended that that you know you had the other parents that were the cardboard cookie cutter snooty 
mm-hmm. parents, you know, but then you had Randy Heller who was real, a, a real mom and had, re- you know, trying to get a job. Like you said, oh, they're going to make me manager. And, and, and she's kind of- so optimistic about yeah. the life too. Like yeah. obviously it's, you know, it's not easy packing up and moving to LA of all places, did. you know, and they, oh. and they, and they do. And it's like, they're not living in the, in the, the greatest place, but she's like, oh, isn't this place great? It's, you know, like, you know, um, and you'd have to be optimistic to think that car could drive cross country. <laughs> <Right. laughs> and she tries to, and she just keeps that going, you know, and I, and I think she's doing it for his sake uh, yes. uh, for a lot. And, and, as, and it's just, you know, yeah. Great point. Yeah. And, and as I've gotten older, I see that. I see that it's kind of she's doing it for him, you yeah. know. It's like, you know, Try trying to trying to exactly because yeah. you know it's tough for her. You know it's got to be hard, and she might be mourning for whatever happened that's making them go to the West Coast and all yeah. that stuff. And perhaps but, that's where he gets it from. You know what yeah. I mean? Like when he's putting mm. on that bravado, like you know, yes. like he gets it from her. I think. Sure. I think yes. a little bit of that spilling into that yeah. his personality as well, and he's trying to be like charming and and all this stuff, and yeah. you know. Yeah, a little bit of his yeah. mom in there, you know, the right. corny, yeah. the corniness, or you know, all that. Yeah, so. this, <laughs> this is how we survived. I think that's what they're yeah. saying. Like, it's like that's their survival instinct and what they've done. So, cool. All right, I, I think that's going to do it for this episode of uh, the Thirty Three Twenty Four Podcast with the Karate Kid from nineteen eighty four. Hard to believe, but uh, mm, crazy. It, it's a great one. Like I said, if, if you've never seen it, you know what? Skip the remake with Jackie Chan oh. and Will Smith's son. It's just don't. Don't go there. Don't bother. Don't bother. Although, it, it's not going to have. It, it's not going to have this. What what this had. It, like I said, the, you know, the layers that's in this film. You, you know, I think you can, you can enjoy it. It's, it. it's certainly a family film. You can enjoy it that way. It, it. You know, for younger kids, like I said, maybe it gets a little long in the tooth for young Jerry. He didn't have the uh, <laughs> wherewithal to stick with it. He wants. He wanted to see knuckles flying, but uh, right. he didn't come to sense appreciate. The, uh, the, yes, the first of the Karate Kid. So, but I, I am looking forward to Jackie Chan and Ralph Macchio coming to the big screen. So, <sighs> I am. Nick, you're. I'm an optimist, man. The only, the only one. <laughs> you are Mrs. Larusso. <laughs> 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 so that's gonna do it. Uh, thank you if you made it this far. Thanks for sticking with us. Like I said in the beginning, if you want to leave us a comment, you could do that in your podcast platform app. Uh, or hit us up on Instagram, Facebook, or YouTube. We'd love to hear from you. We'd love to interact with our audience. We appreciate it. You're what makes the wheels turn. So uh, if it wasn't for you guys, we would just be doing this. We would still be doing this, just, you know, <laughs> like this, I <laughs> guess. Ourselves. You know, but with uh, fewer people listening. But we appreciate it anyway. So uh, let's see. Nick Leshy, thank you so much. We're going to put that thank link you. for City of Kick blog in there. So go check out what Nick is doing on his blog. It's really neat stuff. Uh, entertainment and pop pop culture which is really neat sean grady drama from the past we'll put a link to his facebook group there you can see the schedule what performances they have coming up or just if you're not in the area just kind of hang out and see what you're doing and and they always post pictures and and a lot of historical facts about the era as well which is a great uh way to learn about that that uh time in in america's past as well thank you always fun hanging out with you guys yeah? yeah it's always always fun and of course mr jerry sullivan thank you so much for for coming with us and, uh, and showing us what it's what it's all about and the uh, <laughs> short attention span you had dur- in, during the eighties for yes. long traumatic <laughs> stretches where nothing happens in in a movie that was supposed to be geared towards kids. So in a way, you're yeah. right. You're like, yeah, where's this going? But uh, it, it it got there eventually. My pleasure, of course. And then uh, of course, Eric will be on his big comfy couch, and I'll be on my rock hard green IKEA chair until the next time we meet each other. So for Jerry, for Nick, for Sean, for Eric, of course, this has been Dean asking you to please be kind. Go ahead and rewind. You've been listening to the 3324 Podcast with Dean Legiro and Eric Cooper. You can find us on your favorite podcast provider. So please like, subscribe, and rate to become a part of the 3324 family. Your feedback is important, so make sure to follow us on Instagram and Facebook at 3324podcast and on Twitter at 3324p to join the conversation. 